What is up, YouTube, and welcome again to another episode of Behind the Wall, presented by Perky Jerky. I'm Pro Bowl 43, as always, along with the sidekicks, Kane Jr. 88, a Thermite 917, and we're here to talk about the Atlanta race weekend. Lots of big things with the new package coming in. So we got the Xfinity race, the Renai 250, the Truck Race Ultimate Tailgating 200, and the Cup Race Folds of Honor Quick Trip 500. So Kane has the race recap. Get that ball a rolling. I will. Eric Almirola started on the pole, his first since the 2012 Coke 600. But Ricky Stenhouse Jr. made the outside lane work on the initial start and managed to grab the lead from Almirola and led lap one. Early on, we had multiple grooves all around the track, which is something I never thought I would say about Atlanta. But then lap 35, the competition caution comes out since overnight rain washed away all the rubber. Everybody came to pit road and Kyle Larson wins the race off. Larson then pulls away to a huge lead over Almirola and very easily wins stage one. Kevin Harvick ends up winning the race off pit road under the stage caution and maintains the lead after an insane restart that saw Kurt Busch try to squeeze three wide between him and Larson through the middle. But then midway through stage two, green flag pit stops come and go, Larson cycling back to the lead. And as the stage wound down, Larson and Harvick engage in a little battle for the lead with Harvick coming out on the winning end, and he goes on to win stage number two. And then on the ensuing restart, Larson grabbed the lead back from Harvick as Harvick got shuffled back to fourth. And things were all going peaches and cream until lap 222 when Kyle shredded a right rear tire, Kyle Busch, not Larson, while running inside the top five, hurting the aerodynamics of his car. Under the ensuing pit stops, Larson has won the race off, but he got busted for speeding on pit road, so he has to drop to the rear. And shortly after the restart, Ryan Blaney gets the lead from Harvick, bringing Martin Truex Jr. and Joey Logano following close behind. So on the next round, a green flag pit stops are underway with just 54 laps to go. Ryan Priest was looking down at his tack to watch his speed on pit road, and he didn't see the 52 of B.J. McLeod come to a stop and just pile drove him and did some pretty good damage to that 47 car. Unfortunately, he ended up driving back on the track, dropping radiator fluid and all kinds of other shit, and that brought out the caution, and it really fucked things up for the leaders. As shortly after that shit show, Joey Logano and Kurt Busch ended up being the only two cars on the lead lap. So they pit, everybody else took the wave around, and we restarted with just about 40 laps to go. Brad Keselowski grabbed the lead from Logano with 32 to go and pretty much held on from then on out. But then we had some drama mid-pack as Logano, who was running second, had to make an unscheduled pit stop for a loose wheel, while fifth place Daniel Hemrick ended up cutting a right front tire, ruining great runs for both of them. And Ryan Blaney, who was also running inside the top ten, he has to pit for a flat as well. But then things start to really ramp up with six to go as Brad starts to back off a ton, allowing Martin Truex Jr. to close in and challenge for the lead. But Brad managed to hold on and score his first win of the season and surpass the great Mark Donahue for most wins all time at Team Penske. So Brad brings home the win. Martin Truex Jr. was second with Kurt Busch in third, Kevin Harvick fourth, Clint Boyer was fifth, Kyle Busch rebounded to finish 6th, Eric Jones winds up in 7th, Eric Almirola finished 8th, Chris Buescher, he had a great run, comes home ninth, and Daniel Suarez rounds out the top 10. So gentlemen, uh, the new package finally made its debut somewhat, and it really wasn't much different than a typical Atlanta race that we've seen the past couple of years. So what are your ratings? We are going to start with Nick. Take it away. Yeah, I do agree with you, and that's why I'm going to give this race a 6 out of 10. It basically was like a classic old Atlanta race. There was really nothing to complain about, but I didn't really see enough from the new package yet to say it was a huge success. I mean, guys were slipping and sliding like you would normally see at this track, and there was, the restarts were just crazy at times. But, I mean, you know, the, the leaders were kind of... In a league of their own, it was really hard with the dirty air still to really do anything in traffic. And, you know, I just, it wasn't really bad by any means, but I was just kind of hoping for a little more based on all the hype they were giving this thing. So, you know, I'll just, I'll go with my 6 out of 10. Tyler? Yeah, 6 sounds right. So that's what I'll give it to. 
it, the restarts were insane. That was kind of one of the best parts of this race. And we almost got a really great finish, you know that? It was almost one of them classic Atlanta finishes, Daryl. And it was just a real decent race kind of all around. It's just so tough to pass. It's just really baffling to me how cars that were so good, for example, like Eric Amarola, who started on the pole, he was really stout early, had his penalty early, and really never recovered. And Kyle Larson being the biggest surprise out of them all, winning the first stage, getting second in the second stage, and had his speeding penalty, and just couldn't go anywhere. Never even broke back into the top ten. And he had nearly half a race to get back up there. So there was really no excuses. Obviously, his car just wasn't handling very well in traffic, but that just proves that this package still is just like, it doesn't really uh, favor the following a car. <laughs> so that's kind of a problem we've been dealing with for years. Either way, it's a decent race. Uh, Brad did a solid job. I don't really get annoyed by him as much anymore, so I'm fine with him winning. Uh, do wish Truex pulled it off, but uh, it's just another one of those races where it's like, yeah, we saw it. Nothing overly memorable, but I didn't hate it enough to think so poorly of it either. So, 6 out of 10. I'm good with it. Kane? I'm going to give it a 6.5 out of 10. Again, there's just really not much else to say. It was just a classic Atlanta race. Uh, it's been a while since we've seen the sun shining in at Atlanta on race day, because the last two years have been overcast. But it was definitely a nice change of pace. Um Handling definitely did play a factor in the, in today's race, and I've been seeing all week on, on Twitter, you know, this race is not uh, going to be uh, a statement for the new package. Uh, that, that'll come next week at Las Vegas when we run the Aero Ducks on the cars, and that that is when we probably will see drafting come into effect, and next week will definitely be interesting, but for this week, it's a six and a half for me. Fair enough. Ah, right, gents, let's go ahead and pencil that in. We'll see you next week. Okay. Shut up, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now it's time to hand out some awards for the Atlanta Race Weekend and starting off with the beautiful classic, the boner of the week. We've got two of them. Kane, this one a real surprise from the truck series, but it wasn't from the race. Tell us all about it. It goes to Chad Finley's hauler driver, who went underneath the wrong tunnel while leaving the track and did a pretty big number of damage to the hauler. Dude, don't they have it signs that say, you know, where haulers must go? Like, you don't go through the small vehicle tunnel. You go through the one where the trucks go through. What the hell were you thinking? This is a first for for me as a NASCAR fan. I don't think I've ever seen that shit happen before. And I hope it doesn't happen again because those haulers are fucking expensive. All right? <laughs> Anyways, moving on to the next boner. Yes, that goes to Ryan Priest, your cup rookie candidate for the year. Didn't expect him to pull a boner maneuver like he did so early in the season, but... That last pit stop really got him. He was running so solid in the top 10 a little bit, and then he was right outside the top 10. When he made his pit stop, he pulls out of his stall and looks down at his tag like, oh, yeah, I'm not going to be. Oh, shit, there's BJ McLeod. And, you know, BJ's big old dumpster can just sitting right in the middle of pit road. Now, he had his own issues with a flat tire, didn't know where the hell he was going. Apparently, he was five stalls down still, but decided to slow down. You could blame a little bit on BJ, but at the end of the day, Ryan looked down at your tack. You don't do that. You learn this in driver's head. Come on, Ryan. Don't be a boner again like that. But I'm sure he won't be. He learned his lesson. Next award. Well, our next award is called Jack Op. Now, hear me out before you say anything. <laughs> so, the way the, the way the guys were pitted, Alex Bowman was right in front of Joey Logano. Now, Bowman blocked Logano in on two separate occasions, and both times Logano got pissed and was like, oh, I'm going to push that car and knock him right off the jack if he does that again. You know, we were like, okay, Joey, you're a jerk. Just deal with it. But then, to compensate from that, Logano parked a little bit shallower in, in his stall, which blocked Martin Truex in, who was right behind him. So then Truex said the exact same thing. Like, oh, man, if he blocks me, I'm going to knock him right off the jack. It was like word for word the same thing. So it was just funny they had the exact same problem. And they should probably both calm down and just race the car, because that's part of the racing. Moving on, we have another classic award. Take it away. That's right. It's the day from hell. 
And Jimmy Johnson is back to his usual self from 2018 because he was slow as hell today. He started 11th, finished 24th, two laps down. But it wasn't even just a bad day for Jimmy. It was just a bad day all around for Hendrick Motorsports as Alex Bowman was the highest finishing Hendrick car in 13th? 15th. What was it, 13th? 15th. Uh, whatever. It, it was a day <laughs> from hell all around. But Jimmy had the worst day of all. I mean, he made it to the final round of qualifying, and then he's complete shit during the race. You thought a crew chief change would help him, but so far it doesn't seem to be working. So I'm so sorry, Jimmy. Your day was just as bad as your paint scheme. Why don't you do it right next time? Next award. Yes, now it's time to hand out some cigar awards. We got a small little handful this week. First off from the Xfinity race, which was still a weird how they do that, having the Xfinity race before the truck race, but it did happen, and Christopher Bell gave him a little ass whipping. Good lord. Didn't take him long to get that first win of the year. Uh, nice job, Christopher. That's all I have to say about that. But we do have another cigar from the Xfinity series, and that goes to Jeffrey Earnhardt. He finished sixth. Yes, he's in a JGR car, but that's still his first career top ten, so it's worth noting. He even did restart the final restart in second, but spun his tires in the outside line and just kind of fell back. But still, it's okay, Jeffrey. Nice beard, nice result. Do more good things. We have more cigars. Yeah, we have one from the truck race. It goes to Ross Chastain. And for the second week in a row, he got a top 10. He finished 6th with Nice Motorsports in the 45 truck. And we just seem to give him a cigar every week. So he just needs his own cigar shop, I think. He just keeps rolling, doing these good things with the underfunded equipment. And he's just a wheel man out there. And our final cigar goes to Brad Kozlowski, of course. He won, and he became the all-time leader at Penske for wins. Man, like, it was just crazy because he had to overcome so much. He was suffering from the stomach flu, he had to take some IVs before the race. But you know what they say, when you're in the car, you don't feel that. And this was just another case of that as he just managed the race really well, especially near the end as Truex was closing on him. He did just enough to pull it off, just a perfectly executed race, and was there when it counted. So congrats to Brad. And all right, man, we got an award, and I think you know it's coming. Kane, what is it? <laughs> oh my god, for the first time in 2019, it's the crying towel! <laughs> oh my god, and it goes to Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Oh, everybody was all salted over the Daytona 500 because of the way he raced. Well, they're right to be salted because he races like a complete jackass at Daytona for some reason. And when he finally watched Radioactive this week and saw just how salted they were, he's like, oh, I'm not working with these guys anymore. Oh, Ricky! <laughs> Why have you got to be such a whiner about all this? You're right! You do race like a complete jackass at Daytona, but yet you think you're all hot shit because you've won two plate races in 2017. Well, let's see. It's, it hasn't worked out for you so far, has it? <laughs> oh, 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 oh my god! You gotta stop doing this, Ricky. You're hurting yourself, you're hurting your team, and you're hurting all the fellow drivers around you by saying this shit like that. It's called co-opetition, as Daryl Waltrip would say back in the early thousands. Why don't you actually cooperate with your fellow drivers instead of alienating them with your stupid things coming out of your mouth, you big crybaby! <laughs> I was going to say something, too, but I think you nailed it right there, Kane, so uh, nice job. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's a double as a straitjacket award, damn it, because, Ricky, you must be freaking crazy! <laughs> Go get your little hug! <laughs> he's gonna, he's gonna need one after this, and it ain't coming from Danica either! <laughs> <laughs> She's too big, busy hugging the big cheese up in this person. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Aaron, you're so much better than Ricky. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently Aaron Rodgers is black now, but that's okay. I think we're done with the awards <laughs> section. Yeah. Aaron, get down from here. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs>
Well, it's that time once again to look at the best paint schemes of the week. We have three good ones, so enjoy the montage. We have to have some bad ones. We have three of them. Kane, what is the first one? Oh, the first one is uh, a new paint scheme that is actually worse than its predecessor. It is Clint Boyer's Haas Automation Ford Mustang. And if you thought last year's Haas paint scheme sucked, specifically the one that he ran in the playoffs, well then get a load of this one. First of all, there's even less red on it this year. It's got a red and kind of a little indent along the door there. And then it's just got a single red stripe running down the middle of the hood and, and the roof. Like, that's the best you could do? Ah, oh my god, Stuart Haas. Whoever designed your paint schemes, they need help. All right, and obviously they, they did great with Suarez's car, but not this one. What the hell were they thinking? Oh my goodness, but that's not the worst one. We got two more, and they're both related somehow. So, who's next? Hmm, yeah. We're going to start off with Kyle Larson's McDonald's car. Oh boy. Now, let's take a look at last year's car, which is a really solid car. Nice mix, red, black, and yellow. But this year, they just completely take away all the black there isn't a trace of it not even an outline for Christ's sake it's just an entirely red car with a huge ass McDonald's arches on the hood on the side and then this random ass yellow stripe from the front onto the side of the car nothing else what in the hell kind of design is this we have talked several times about blown up logos being designs I mean I know this is technically not supposed to be a design because it's McDonald's arches, but still, you should not be making logos insanely bigger than you need to. They're cut off. Nonsensical. This is just piss poor. But if you thought this was bad, oh boy, Nick. Whoo! This sucks ass. Yeah, it does. It's Bubba Wallace's version of the McDonald's scheme. Hashtag Team Bacon, and <laughs> what are they trying to do here? It doesn't even say McDonald's on the quarter panel. It just has the arches, and there's a giant red square behind the number. I guess they couldn't figure out how to change the number color, so they just had to throw something behind it so it stood out, but it's like not any design. It's just there. The worst part is probably the giant strip of bacon going along the roof. I think I'm getting a little tired of food being integrated into these paint schemes. First you had Ryan Newman's Oscar Mayer one, and now this going on. Almirola had something similar last year, but at least that looked decent. But this just does not do McDonald's any favors. Like, fine, you don't need black because that's not really one of their colors, but at least put some kind of design into this. Like, if you look back at, like, a John Andretti scheme or something, like, with the Cheerios, like, do a nice-looking design like that, nice and flowing. This has no flow. It's just bits and pieces thrown together, and you deserve to finish 27. So, there you yeah. have it. 
These paint schemes just absolutely pissed on their little hashtag team classics, hashtag team bacon promotion. That's not how you promote things, damn it. With ass looking schemes like that. Terrible. By the way, Nick Lamacki for hire. He's looking for a graphic design <laughs> job. He I'm, will do I mean, better. I'm just saying, like, if you have a like a halfway decent promotion like this and you're gonna have a pair of cars, don't make them look this plain and uninspired. It doesn't help the promotion. That's not the point. Nope. Does it make me want to go to McDonald's? Hell no. I mean, I might still get me a Big Mac, but it sure as shit ain't because of these cars. Do better next time, or don't. I really don't give a damn. We're still going to talk negatively because we deserve it. Bye! Jesus Christ! <laughs> All right, it is time to recap the fantasy results for Atlanta. And Tyler brings home the win. He picked Kevin Harvick, who finished fourth and brought home 52 points. I come home second after picking Martin Truex Jr., who finished second and got 49 points. Damani finishes third. He picked Kyle Larson, who wound up in 12th and got 44 points. And, oh, Mr. Lamackey came home fourth after picking Kyle Busch, who finished sixth but only got 33 points. So now it is on to Sin City, Las Vegas Motor Speedway, next week. So, Nick, who is your pick? I am going to go with Martin Truex Jr. This house is a fucking prison! He's won here before. He almost won Atlanta. I just think he kind of has a good grasp of this package already. It'll be a little more of a wild card at Vegas, but I, I still think he'll have a strong enough car to get it done. He's with Joe Gibbs now. He's going to have a really strong season anyway, and he's going to get it started off on the right foot. So Martin Truex Jr., he's going to reel in the fish. Damani, who's your pick? I'm playing bullshit! Thank you, Damani. How about, like, give me a pick when I ask you? So, whatever. Kane, who is your pick? All right, well, he won there last year. Who says he can't win there again? I'm going to take Kevin Harvick. In the galaxy of this sucks, camel dicks! Obviously, the big three should be strong again at the mile and a half tracks, even with a new package. But we've seen crazier things happen before, but I'm still picking Kevin Harvick. So, Tyler, who's your pick? Well, I'm going to go ahead and take a swing at the fence. I'm going to take a young gun. Young gun, I'm Blaney. You're fucking hot! That's right. He's going to glass case emotion all over Las Vegas, try to make up for his uh, poor outing at Atlanta, which was really good, and then took a nice nosedive to the shitter. But, uh, oh well, uh, Blaine is going to bounce back, then Pansky Ford's going to have the spade, and uh, they're going to get it done. So, see you in Sin City. Roll some dice, lose some cash, and uh, your wife will hate you. Well, that does it for another lovely episode of Behind the Wall, sent by Perky Jerky, the jerky that's always perky and expensive. But you should still grab a bag today. So, for Damani HD, he's not here. He'll be here soon, though. Probably sooner than Santa Claus, so you can count on that. For Kane Jr. 88, still has a beard, still looking forward to things at Dairy Queen, most likely the chicken tenders with barbecue sauce. For Thermite 917, now he goes to Dairy Queen, every so often, but normally he'll just get a small ice cream cone because that's all his mom will allow him to get with his daily allowance of 89 cents. I'm a and big from... boy, damn it. <laughs> no, you're not. You will not get a Happy Meal, but you should sign up for Team Classics or Team Bacon. Which one are you going to choose? Ah, oh, horse shit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's what you choose. <laughs> Somebody get this guy a Happy Meal! <laughs> And for myself, Pro Bowl 43, bring your bacon. This has been Behind the Wall. You've been behind the wall. Catch you later. Hold on, guys, make a sec. <laughs> like, it, it wasn't bad. Shut the... <laughs> Oh boy. That's not my fault. It oh my god. It just further. It was, it, that's not even the worst he's done all. Well, whatever. It's been a, it was a rough day all around. Not just. <laughs> you oh on my that god. One. Yes, I did. And became the all time race winner. Ah. <laughs>
it'll be a little more of a wild card at Vegas, but I still think he'll, he'll have a like, <laughs> <laughs> Always, always, always.